Hey guys, welcome back to Shop Life. Today we're going to continue disassembling this M54. Like I said before in previous videos, this engine came out of a 2001 BMW 330 convertible, so it is the M54 B30. Uh, this engine is also an E39s and then uh, the X3s, there's X5s, a lot, any, any of them that use a 3.0, it's in there. And this procedure is actually quite similar for the M52 as well. So you could, re you could refer to this whole series regardless of what engine you have, as long as like the M52 and M54. But today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing the timing chain cover, we're going to remove the timing chain, all the guides, uh, we're going to take the oil pan off, the oil pump and all of that, and I'll go ahead and go over a few of the problems with the 3.0 engine, like the oil pump nut that tends to back off when you're using it in high RPMs all the time. So I'll go and address all those as well. Uh, and as you can see, we already had the heads removed, uh, the camshafts, all that stuff is already gone. So pretty much what we have here is the block, the oil pan, the pistons are still in there, and the timing chain guides and all that. So let's go and get started. So we're going to start off by removing this front timing chain cover. Uh, it's held in with a lot of 10 millimeter bolts. Let's go and pull all those off and then just pull the whole cover off. All those are off. Now we have a few on the bottom. And now we should be able to separate the cover. All right, now that we have the cover off, you can see the rest of the timing chain the main sprocket that's on the camshaft as well, I mean the crankshaft, and then this guide is actually broken, which I'm not sure if I did that or it had happened earlier, but we're gonna go ahead and pull that off. There's a tab right here where you can just push the tab out a little bit. Well, try not to break it, but you're gonna have to replace these anyways if you're gonna be doing all this work. So if it breaks, just, yep. This is really brittle, so it's going to break. And it just pulls off. Now we have this timing chain, and then we have the oil pan left. So let's go ahead and go ahead and remove this oil pan, which is held in with a whole lot of 10 millimeter bolts that go around the whole block. I'm going to leave one bolt on all four corners just loose on there. That way the oil pan just doesn't fall down. I could twist the whole engine over on the engine stand, but I don't want to do that because all the oil that's in the pan is just going to run back up and it'll start dripping out from the top. Alright, so here's the oil level sensor that tells the oil level pretty much. And if that is bad, what you'll get is a warning light that comes on your dash. So the yellow oil light, and pretty much what it does is it'll splash for like 30 seconds, it'll be on, and it'll just cut off every time you turn the car on. And what that means is that your level sensor is bad. Now if you have an oil light that comes on and stays on for like 15 seconds, and then when you turn the car off, uh, it's, it comes back on, that means that you're low on oil. And if the oil light comes on while the car is on and it's yellow, that means you're a quart low. So if you have any of those symptoms, I know there's a better like, uh, you know, DIY kind of thing on the forums that will tell you exactly all the intervals and stuff to diagnose the sensor. So you should be able to read that. And if I can find it, I'll post it on the channel as well. So let's continue with this. Here is the oil pickup tube that picks up oil from the bottom of the oil pan. That way you're never starved from oil. And then we have a little cover right here. 
and this is the cover for all the bearings and uh, all that. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go ahead and take off this timing chain, the rest of the other guide, and then we'll go ahead and take off the oil pump as well. So here's the primary timing chain. These you really don't have to service for a while. I mean, I've seen people on original chains for around 250 to 300,000 miles. Uh, if you get some kind of rattle or something, that could be your tensioner or one of your guides is broken. But usually the timing chains, they really don't mess up. Now here's the actual crankshaft itself. It goes all the way through. And this is the chain for the oil pump. And this is the nut that usually backs off. So what happens is whenever you're driving the car in like high RPMs, like if you're tracking the car a lot or whatever, this nut tends to back off. So what people do is they sell a different type of nut that you can uh, put a wire tie through here and you just tie it around this actual gear or sprocket itself. That way the nut can never back off. So if you ever have your oil pan off for any reason, make sure you go ahead and do this. This is not really a problem on the 2.5s, but it is a problem on the 3.0s. So let's go ahead and get off this sprocket and get the oil pump chain off. This is a 17 millimeter nut. And as you can see, it is on there pretty well. And one thing I forgot to mention, this is a left hand thread. So in order to loosen it, you have to turn it clockwise. There's the nut. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull off the sprocket and then pull the chain off. All right, now that we have both of those chains off, let's go ahead and get off this guide. This one, there's a tab right here that you just push and you pull the guide off. So now this is the, the front of the engine without anything attached to it anymore. We still have these studs. Uh, these studs are for the timing chain guides and this is the crankshaft itself that goes all the way through. Also, one thing I forgot to mention is the seal for the front timing cover that can also leak out oil, which is on the timing cover itself. So this seal right here goes around the crankshaft right here and seals this section off. That way no oil comes by through here. But as you can see, this one is also seeping a little bit, which has resulted in all this little buildup right here. So that's one of the other seals that also goes bad, but that, I mean, usually doesn't go as bad as the rear main seal. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and remove the oil pump, which is held in with 13 millimeter bolts. There's one right here, one right here, and then there's one up here, and there's one in the back on the other side as well. Oh, and we have to also remove the oil pickup tube. There's two 10 millimeter bolts holding it right here. So let's go ahead and remove those. So here's the oil pump. This is where the gear goes that attaches to the timing chain. And here's the oil pickup tube right here. And there's actually a screen on the bottom of this oil pickup tube inside here that traps any other elements. As you can see, there's some dirt in there right now. So if you ever have your oil pan off, make sure you clean the screen as well. And to clean it, you can use some kind of brake cleaner or anything like that. All right, so now let's go and turn over the engine so you can see the bottom of the crankshaft and the rods and the pistons and all that. Oops, let me get some cat litter, hold on. Let's try this again. Let's go ahead and get this cover off, which is gonna be held in with 13 millimeter bolts and one 10 millimeter bolt right here. All right, so here's the actual crankshaft itself. These are the little caps for the rods and the pistons. These are held in with all external torque sockets. And then we have this uh, other gear right here. All right, so let's go ahead and pull off all of this stuff, all the caps, uh, the rod bearings and all that. We'll pull all that off. And we'll even try going to get the pistons out as well. 
So you don't actually have to remove these to take off the rod bearings or anything. I'm just going to go and remove it since we're disassembling everything. All right, so these are E12s for all of these. All right, now we're going to go ahead and turn the engine sideways that when we pull everything off, nothing falls out and nothing falls in. All right, so you can see the rod bearings right here. Once you clean this up, you can see actual the heat, uh, what do you call it, heat damage and any marring on it. This one has some heat damage where you can see by a discoloration. So on the M54s, they usually don't have that many problems with the rod bearings. The engines that do have problems are the S54s. Uh, they have a lot of problems with the rod bearings, especially the early models. So if you have an S54, to remove the rod bearings is practically the same way. You just got to take off the oil pan and the cover, and then you can get to them. And then they have a whole different uh, type of rod bearing that you could put that are upgraded so they don't get damaged. But as, as in terms of the M54, if you're going to take them off, might as well replace them. But these, this should be fine. I mean, they usually don't go bad unless something has happened to your engine. Here's the piston. These are the little rings, the oil scraper and all that. And this is actually what keeps the piston in once you have the uh, rod bearing and the cap pulled off. So what you have to do, you can lightly tap it from this end or get some kind of suction cup to pull it off from here. But it's, it's going to be held in just like a little bit. And this is actually what causes the oil to be burnt on the M54s. And now you can see the carbon buildup around here. I mean, it's not too bad. It is a little bit. Uh, and there's carbon buildup on the piston itself on the top. And we have the rod right here. And there's the other bearing on here, which, as you can see, has a little bit of damage. And the bearings are pretty easy to remove. You just pull them out from this side. As you see, there's two grooves. So if you just push it, and it just comes right out. And there's a lot of heat damage right here. And whenever you are replacing the, these items, make sure you get new bolts and all new hardware for the most part because most of these are stretch bolts, so they're one-time use, so you can't reuse them. What you want to do is you want to push them out or suck, like use a suction cup to and you just want to push on them lightly. And you got to be careful not to mar any of the uh, contact surfaces. Otherwise, it's not going to sit properly when you try to reassemble everything. So here are the rings that, was, that are holding everything once you have that uh, cap off. This one's a lot worse than the other one. As you can see, there's a lot more carbon buildup all around, even on the piston itself. So now what we're going to do, we're going to turn the crankshaft that way the other four pistons, well, we'll do two at a time. The other two pistons are going to be up here. So that way it's just easier to pull out once we have the, uh, the caps taken off. All right, now we're going to go ahead and push off this piston.
And there's the last one. All right, so now we're gonna go to remove this crankshaft. So these are the bearings for the crankshaft, all of these, and that last one. So let's go ahead and pull those off. Those are all 17 millimeter bolts, and they are gonna be really tight, so you're gonna have to use a breaker bar. This is the rear main seal cover, which is why it's causing it not the socket not to fit in all the way. All right, so as you can see, in order for me to get off these two last 17s, I have to remove the rear main seal cover. In order for me to do that, I have to take it off of this engine stand and then I can do it. I really can't do that right now, but once you get those off, then you only have these two 17s left. And once those are out, then you're gonna pick up all these caps, pull the caps off, and then the crankshaft just literally just slides out. So. I mean, that's pretty much it for the rest of the whole engine disassembly. All you would have left after that is just the block. And you can get the block also cleaned and machined if it has any uh, stripped threads. You can helicoil them, which I'll be going through all that once I get the rest of this off. And that will be another series of rebuilding the engine. And that's if we decide to do that, depending on the condition of the head and all that. I'll make a whole separate video on going over the condition of all the components and pretty much what all we took off what was worn and what caused everything due to the overheating or whatever. So we'll go through all that in a separate video. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions regarding anything I did today, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if, anybody, if any of you guys are in Southern California, uh, my shop is in Alhambra and I'm open for business. So if anybody needs any work done, be sure to message me on Instagram or comment on here. And the shop's name is Alpha Motorworks. So stay tuned for that guys. And thanks for watching.